Hello, and welcome to lecture number 36, where we continue our discussion of the nucleus, do the nucleus part three. In an earlier, in the last video, we discussed the fact that we are stardust, we are golden. And we said that the nucleus made of protons, neutrons, collectively, these objects are called nucleons. So any particle found in, within the nucleus is called the nucleon. And we also mentioned that the number of protons determines the identity of an element not the number of neutrons. Remember, that's an isotope. So if you have one proton, your hydrogen, two protons, helium, three, lithium, six, carbon, uh, 92 protons, your uranium. So it's the number of protons that determine the identity of the nucleus. Okay. Um, today, we want to talk about uh, two conservation laws. Remember, we did conservation laws before. We spoke about conservation of energy. The energy you start with equals the energy you finish with, as well as conservation of momentum, linear and angular. The momentum you start with is equal to the momentum you finish with, the total momentum. Conservation law, what you start with equals what you finish with. So here, we're going to start with conservation of electric charge. If I have a box and it has a total charge of 23, no matter what I do to that box, shake it, blow it up, Afterwards, the total charge must be 23. If I have a system that has a charge of minus 80, no matter what I do to that system, blow it up, whatever happens, the total charge must be minus 80 afterwards. So you cannot create or destroy charge. And the second electric charge, and the second we're gonna have nucleon number. If I start with 30 nucleons, I must finish with 30 nucleons. Remember, there's two types of nucleons. All right, so our discussion here is going to regard uh, be with uh, respect to nuclear stability. So when things coalesce, remember you can make a nucleus and it can be unstable. What does an unstable nucleus mean? It means it's not in its lowest energy state and everything in nature wants to be in its lowest energy state. If a nucleus is not in its lowest energy state, we say it is radioactive. So a radioactive nucleus is an unstable nucleus or a nucleus that is not in its lowest energy state. All right, we're going to first talk about beta decay. There's positive and negative beta decay. All right, uh, let's imagine that for some reason, again, nuclear physics question, forget the reasons, whatever. Suppose a, uh, a, a nucleus has too many neutrons. Well, what can a neutron do? Well, a neutron, which has zero charge, the only nucleon it can change to, remember conservation of nucleon number, the only nucleon it can change to is a proton. It's the only other thing. But notice we start with zero charge. You cannot finish with a plus charge, conservation of electric charge. So we create a negative particle. This negative particle is called a negative beta particle because they didn't know what it was when it was discovered. Uh, it turns out that a negative beta particle is just an electron, a very energetic electron. So a negative beta particle is a very energetic electron, okay? Now, note that a new element's produced. Why? We're gaining a proton. So inside the nucleus, what's happening is a neutron is changing to a proton, and what's emitted, the thing that's gonna fly off, is this negative beta particle. This electron will be coming, flying off. So the neutron changes to a proton, which stays within the nucleus, and the electron, or the beta minus, comes flying off. And we're adding a uh, proton. So if element 30 undergoes negative beta decay, it becomes element 31. If element 30 undergoes six negative beta decays, it becomes element 36, because you've added six protons. Every time it negative beta decays, you add a proton, and you become a new element, OK? All right, what happens if there's too many protons for whatever reason? Remember, protons don't like each other. We need the neutrons there, which is the nuclear glue. Protons feel nuclear attraction, but they also repel. So you got to get them close enough, smash them together at 100 million degrees, so they get close enough to stick together. All right, meanwhile, the neutrons are trying to keep everything together. But imagine there's too many protons. Well, a proton, again, the only nucleon it can change to is a neutron. Positive goes to zero conservation of electric charge, a positive particle must be created. Turns out there's a neutrino, another particle, but we don't care. So what's happening here is you're losing a proton. Once again, a new element is produced. Why? Because the number of protons has changed. So in positive beta, you lose a proton. So element 20 will become element 19. If element 20 undergoes six now, uh, positive beta decays, it becomes element 14 because you lost six protons, okay? So it's positive, negative. Now, a positive beta particle is also called a positron 
or an anti-electron. So a positive beta is really an antimatter. It's an anti-electron, also known as a positron. These are all synonyms. Okay, so yes, antimatter exists, not just in Star Trek. All right, the, uh, so that was beta decay, positive and negative. Uh, and again, the element changes, you either gain or lose a proton. Second thing is alpha decay, okay? Here we imagine that the nucleus is too big. Remember the nuclear force is trying to keep this nucleus together. If you've ever seen a periodic table, you'll notice it doesn't go up endlessly. It doesn't just continue. Why? Because if a nuclei get too big, the nuclear force cannot keep it together and it decays. So many of the elements live for less than a nanosecond that are on the periodic table. They're artificially or human-made uh, elements. So the nucleus can get too big and the nuclear force can't reach and can't keep things together. Remember, the protons are trying to push apart anyway. Well, one stable way for a nucleus to stay together is for it to get rid of a chunk. Just get rid of a fat part. Just cut it off and get rid of it. Liposuction part of the uh, nucleus. Force. And this is called alpha decay. And what happens is the chunk that comes flying off is actually, it says there's an alpha. It's got two protons. And it's got two neutrons, excuse me. And so the charge of an alpha is plus two. So if element 20 undergoes alpha decay, it becomes element 18, right? You lost two protons. If element 20 undergoes two alpha decays, it becomes element 16 because you've lost two protons and then two protons. Remember, the number of neutrons does not affect the identity of the element. It's the number of protons. So if you alpha decay, you lose a charge of plus two, okay? And this alpha particle is the same as a helium-4 nucleus because it's got two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so an alpha particle is a helium-4 nucleus. Okay, same thing. Finally, uh, the third type of decay is called gamma decay. You remember gamma, gamma radiation from the EM spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum? Gamma is the most energetic type of photon. The charge of a gamma particle is zero. The mass of a gamma particle is zero. So all it's doing is shifting energy levels. Uh, so a nucleon, we imagine that a nucleon is just falling to a lower energy level, and then a photon is emitted, a gamma photon. In atoms, so here we have nuclear forces. Nuclear forces are much stronger than the electric forces. So the photon that comes off is the most energetic photon. What happens in an atom? In an atom, when electrons go from one level to another, they fall down. A photon's given, but a photon of visible light, okay? And I'll talk about uh, that, that in a second. Uh, it could be visible light, it could be heat. Why? Because the electric force is so much less than the, uh, the uh, nuclear force, okay? So photons can be emitted or they can be absorbed. And I'll talk about that uh, in, in a little bit, uh, maybe in the next lecture before we talk about uh, more on radioactivity. So gamma decay, what happens is the element stays the same because you're not losing any protons, you're not gaining any protons. So when something undergoes gamma decay, the element, the identity of the element remains the same. Okay, so we imagine energy levels and one of the nucleons goes to a lower energy level. Okay, let's go backwards for a second, shall we? And I'll start off the next lecture with uh, picking up what I'm going to say right now. Okay. So energy levels. So we believe there's energy levels within the nucleus. And we believe there's energy levels. We know there's energy levels for electrons. So our picture of the atom is here's a nucleus. And then we're going to imagine these energy levels, okay, with electrons, okay? In the next lecture, I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk about energy levels 
of the atom. And I'm going to talk about the spectra and about color and why things have color. And then we'll get back to uh, nuclear instability and, and uh, half-life and things like that. Okay, see you in a bit.